Well, you certainly know that if you put bottled water in the freezer, once it reaches zero degrees, its volume changes, causing the bottle to explode. Maybe if you're really into thermodynamics, you know that magnets gradually lose their magnetic charge when they're heated. These are both examples of phase transition, if I'm correct. If it's something that you've, it's probably something you've seen in your everyday life, but it's still very difficult to prove mathematically. My guest today, Hugo Duminil Copin, is a mathematics professor and also the 2022 laureate of the Fields Medal, which is the highest honor in mathematics for these very complex topics that I just attempted to explain, hopefully not in too much of a fail. Uh, Hugo, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. For so you weren't necessarily destined to be a mathematician. How did you get here? Yeah, I actually, for me, math came pretty late in my life. I wanted to be an astronomer and then, uh, you know, a uh, handball uh, player. So <laughs> fortunately, I, I didn't uh, choose this, these ways. And, and, and later on, what happened is that in, in high school, I, I felt in love with math, but it was very late. So my father was a sport teacher. My mom was a dancer. I was not destined to, to, be, a, to, be, to a be a mathematician. Well, so can you tell us, tell us a little bit about the work that you were honored for with the Fields Medal? Well, you did it, you did it great. Maybe you should you know, come to work <laughs> with me more often. So, so I, indeed, I, I study what we call phase transition, which are like drastic change of, the, of, the, of matter, how matter changes its behavior. And you gave a very good example with water. If Let me give you the second one. If you heat it to 100 degrees, everybody knows that it becomes vapor. And there is a big change. It's the same molecules, right? But they change their behavior completely. So we study mathematically, if you want, through mathematical caricatures, like we kind of distort a little bit reality to make it fit in, mathematic, in the mathematics world. And we try to understand why water should boil, basically. And you also uh, are interested in magnets, clearly. Why, why magnets and how does that fit into what you've Yeah, studied? so actually there are, phase transition is something very common. There are many phase transition in matter and, and uh, the magnetism one, so the, what we call at, at Curie's temperature, there is this loss of magnetization. This is one that, uh, that I'm very much interested in. You know, there's this joke in our community that actually we don't know why water boils mathematically. So we took another phase transition where we know things happen, which is, uh, which is the magnetism one. So I, I understand that you're not working on the concrete application part of things, but mm -hmm. if you had to imagine some of the ways that your work can be applied concretely, what do you think is in store in the future? So, so for instance, you know, I, I, so I use, and that's where mathematics is great, is that you, you get to a level of abstraction where you make connections between objects that you don't really think are connected in the first place. So, so magnetism is actually related to another field called percolation. And percolation is a study of porosity of medium. And so I mostly study this and then use this connection to study uh, magnetism. And for percolation, for instance, you can understand uh, how fast uh, ice is, uh, is uh, melting by studying how water percolates, how it goes through ice. And, and how it weakens, if you want, ice and make it melt. So this is, for instance, a concrete application. Uh, there, are, there are mathematicians working in this area, but that's, uh, it's not my main motivation. I, I... Okay, so perhaps maybe with climate change, work on climate change. Exactly, for climate change, there is use of percolation. Okay, so for you personally, though, this sounds like a purely intellectual exercise then, what you've studied. Yes, and I want, yeah, I want to, to keep it that way, because I believe that, you know, it's by complementary visions on one thing that you actually get different ideas. So in this case, in my case, I, I'm motivated by aesthetism, like really, I think that there are beautiful ideas in mathematics. And I, I believe, maybe it's wrong, but I believe that beautiful ideas are those that actually will have the most intense application and the most, uh, the deepest application. So I'm motivated by that. And then I believe that there will be also people that are good at different things. They are not maybe as good as me at creating ideas from thin air, but they are extremely good at understanding that this idea is what they need to create this tool or this tool and this application. So it's a combination of these two visions on the same object, if you want, on the same idea that is going to create a discovery. Okay, so you've said before, and this kind of to tail end off of what you just said, that smartness is not rele relevant for being creative in math. You draw a link then between mathematics and creativity and also uh, between mathematics and sensibility, the way that people perceive the world. Can you explain that? Yeah, I, I think this is something that maybe in the way we 
teach math, we don't realize that mathematics is before everything just a creativity uh, exercise. You work with your brain, with your neurons, if you want, to create ideas. And in this way, I, I do believe exactly like, you know, the best painters are not necessarily the people that are the most by, I mean, the agile at, uh, at, at, at drawing. You know, sometimes it's just that they have this sensitivity that they are going to draw the thing in a completely different thing and you get uh, a Picasso, right? So here it's the same in math. Sometimes the smartest person, the people that are the, the most, as, as a machine, if you want, the most efficient are not necessarily the most creative because maybe sometimes you need to struggle, you know, trying to understand something to actually get the ideas that you can do it differently, for instance. So this is typically the type of things in, in which I believe. So I don't believe that smartness is so important in mathematics, even though some colleagues <laughs> told me that they completely disagree, but that's, uh, that's <laughs> I, part I understand of the job, that. right? <laughs> so I, that brings me perhaps to a last question. I wonder if perhaps teaching mathematics that way, or the failure to teach mathematics that way, closes off a lot of students who could be good at it. I say this because France, of course, has the second highest number of Fields medals in the world, uh, and yet French students rank among the lowest in the Eurozone, both in mathematics yeah. and in science. How would you explain the discrepancy? Yeah, I think, so first, of course, I mean, the best uh, students, sometimes maybe they don't even need the teaching, right? They, they, it's so, uh, so easy for them. So they, I'm not surprised by the discrepancy, but I'm really horrified by the results for the majority, because I think this has actually a huge impact on society if people don't learn how to think don't learn how to use these basic skills that help you in your everyday life. So there is a big discrepancy. I think that maybe the error, uh, like the place of the error is not completely right in the way we teach mathematics. Mathematics is as everything, like everything you learn, you learn by mistakes. So you should, you should let the time to uh, let the student have the time to make mistakes, realize, I mean, there is nothing better than making a huge mistake on a problem and realizing it and then find the right answer. This is the best feeling in the world, and most of the problems I like in, the, in, in, my, uh, in my education and in my uh, career were problems where I had a completely wrong intuition of what was happening, but then I corrected myself. So I think the place of the error is definitely to be rethought. It's a place of collaboration as well, I think, because as many things that go deep in the roots of, of uh, humanity, and this is the case of mathematics, you have at the deep root the fact that this was something you share. And I don't think that in the way we teach mathematics, there is this sharing thing to think together, to teach each other uh, between students, to teach each other mathematics, because you learn much better from another seven-year-old than from this old, uh, you know, uh, uh, this old human that is teaching you that you should do that because it's useful, which is also something I don't understand. I, you never teach a kid that something uh, that he should do something by telling him it's useful. I mean, you, you teach him because he's going to enjoy it. Well, with that, that is food for thought. Uh, Hugo Duminil Copan, both for teachers and for students. There you have it. If you're creative and if you accept the possibility of error, maybe you too can excel in mathematics and win uh, the Fields Medal. Hugo Duminil uh, Copan, thank you very thank much you. for thank coming you. on the show.